Got another cassette deck to look at today. This one's from Technix. It's an RSM275X. And this one isn't working. Now, this is the same model as the one that I've got, and it more than likely has the same problem. Let's check it out. I got in an RSM275 in pretty good condition. This one's not working. Let's just see what exactly it's doing. So I load the cassette. It uh, rewinds no problem. It fast forwards no problem, but when you put it in play, it just makes noise and never plays. In fact, it won't. That won't go into pause or play. So let's. Uh, get into this one and see what the problem with it is. The very fact that this unit only had sc two screws holding it together and the fact that the wires have all been, all the wire ties have been taken off tells me that this has been serviced before somewhere. As you can see the uh, no tie downs have been put on it. Uh, this deck here is mechanical or it's a uh, a motor controlled mechanism. There's a cam that operates the the deck itself and quite often there's a belt that, that goes out on these ones. Uh, I've got one just like this and I've changed the belt on mine a couple times over the last 20 or so years so good chance that that's uh, where the fault is. Uh, the belt is actually underneath here, and it's a real pain in the butt to get to. These decks are not um, easy to service by any stretch of the imagination. Fun. Fun times for all. I guess the first thing to do is unplug it, and uh, we'll start removing the uh, mechanism from here. The front panel has to come off. I think the front will pop off now. I gotta pull the knobs off, I think. Uh, at least I gotta pull the I gotta pull at least the level control knob has to come off at a minimum. I think that's the only knob that needs to come off, yes. Okay, the front pops off, revealing that nice vacuum fluorescent display on this unit. I think two more screws in the bottom come out and then couple screws in the top and the whole deck should lift out. Uh, next would be these screws, red screws. Alright, now does this lift out? Yes, it does. The whole, the whole mechanism now should lift out. And there'll be some plugs that need to come out of the board here. So let's just unplug everything and uh, get it ready to, to service. So there's a plugs on the top here. And they are labeled. D. So D, E, F, and L. And then there's this one down here, which unplugs. That one's a K. It's always a good idea to photograph when you're taking these things apart too, if you're undoing a bunch of plugs. It's a good idea to photograph it. That way, you know where things go when it comes time to put things back together. And there's another plug down here. It needs to come out. And another plug over here. And another plug down here. And looks like there's one or two more. That one's already done. What's the next one? Is there another plug here? 
Now there's another plug right down here. There. All right. Okay, so now the deck is, uh, or the chassis is separated from the from the the rest of the box. Of course, the power button comes detached as well. Just to remove if I can. Maybe I can't. I don't want to break anything. I'm going to leave that. Look at this. This one has a direct drive capstan motor. Beautiful, huh? It's a three motor design, direct drive capstan motor. It has a control motor that operates the, the real motors and it also has a a, uh, a separate motor, I think, for playback, if, I'm, if I remember. Now, this top piece should come off. There's a couple screws that hold it in place. So let's remove them. There's one here. Of course, the screwdriver's too big. It's got a smaller screwdriver. Remove this screw. And this top plate will lift off. This is the belt that I assume is bad. Right down here. Oh, it doesn't appear to be. This belt does not appear to be. It's not broken. How is it for? Of course, now that the unit is, is apart, it's hard to tell. But it's, it's certainly not broken. Is it slipping? Can't test it with it with everything unplugged, unfortunately. But I have to assume that this is the belt that's that's giving us trouble on this one. There's a right here. It's either slipping or is it the pulley that's slipping? I mean, the belt is tight. It's not like it's slipping. It's not like it's loose. I guess it is slipping. Yeah, it's slipping on the motor. It's slipping on the motor shaft down here. I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but uh, on this motor here, there's a shaft on here. That's what drives it, and uh, it appears that it's, uh, it's sticking. Can we see it? See, when I turn that, it's, the motor shaft is not turning. The belt is slipping right down there. So. That belt is shot. Or it's going to be shot. Looks like it's been changed at some point too. Well, as much as I don't like the idea of tearing one of these mechanisms apart, let's uh, get in there and check that belt out. It's obviously slipping, so let's see if I can find one to replace it and get the thing working like new again. Get the board out, and this we're going to be really careful because it's got this, you know, it's got a ribbon, it's got a ribbon cable on here, and I don't want to damage it, so I got to go oh, put one more screw down here. I guess that might help if I remove that one. Get the light out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now this this whole mechanism should. With that, I'm going to undo these two plugs just so that there's no, no extra wires tangled up here. And uh, I should be able to lift this board out, sort of, and swing it out of the way. Hopefully not damaging anything. Get that out of the way. These plugs can come out too. That one can come out. And that wire can come out of here. Okay. These go to a couple switches on the top here. What else can come out? I gotta remove this plug. Like all these plugs have probably got to come out. 
because I think I gotta take this board out of the way too. Uh oh, I just broke that wire. We're gonna have to fix that one on that P plug. Oh well. Might as well solder that one in while I'm at it. Don't know what this is for, but it's obviously for something. It might be for the light. It might be the light bulb in behind the, uh, the tape for all I know. But it broke, so no time like the present to fix it. And for someone from the last video that asked what brand of solder I use, where is my roll of solder? That's it. Yik's solder manufacturer out of China. It just says high quality solder wire. That's the stuff I've been using for the last uh, couple of years. This is a, a more empty roll of it. I've got another roll here somewhere that's full. It's probably even in behind this chassis here. But that's what I've been using and it works. It works well. It's as good as anything else. I used to use Kester solder almost exclusively, but uh, it's become so bloody expensive and nobody carries it. You know, I, I certainly could order it in, but uh, I don't want to pay shipping charges. You know, anytime you order anything, you got to pay freight. And if the freight comes to more than two bucks, which is what it costs me basically in electricity to plug in my electric car and take it down to the local shop, it's costing me about two dollars in energy to go and buy something. So if, if the shipping costs are going to be more than about two bucks, which obviously they would be, then I'm going to go buy it local and uh, save some money. The only time I won't buy something local is if I can't get it local. Okay, so that wire is now resoldered back onto the, the main board there. Next, I have to remove some more screws. I'm going to place this further back on the bench just so that the uh, so that there's no weight from wires hanging down that could put excess weight on the uh, circuit board there. I got to take out this board as well because I have to get in behind here. So remove a couple more screws. Watch me go to all this trouble and not have a belt that's going to fit. Wouldn't that be something? And I, I wouldn't want to go boiling one of these ones just because it's it's a high stress belt and it's in an area that's hard to get at. So I wouldn't want to be having to redo this one again. If it was mine, I'd do it, right? But if it's not my machine, then uh, I would rather not have to to redo the same work again. Okay, what did I take out before on this? I think I gotta take out this motor. So there's a, a screw that goes through here, another screw that goes through there, and that should, I think, lift out the motor. Could be totally wrong on this, it's been so long. OK, 
it up if so like this. Okay, now you can see where we're getting to. <laughs> we're getting down to where the belt is. So I have to lift out the, the motor here. But I also got to lift out the solenoid. It's down here. I'm just going to get this these wires out of the way. They're kind of trapping this flex cable and I don't want to put any undue strain on it, if you know what I mean. Also, undo this wire clip and get that out of the way. Uh, motor and I guess this uh, solenoid's got to come out, so we'll remove the, the screw from the solenoid. And this goes in only a specific way, so you got to kind of note what way it goes in, otherwise it's going to jam. It, it, it's, it's held up like that and it fits over. There's a, right down in here, there's a lever that that's got to go, it's got to go through it's the hole. A little pin's got to go through that hole there. Okay, now I should be able to remove the motor, the top motor screw. And lift the motor out. And off comes the belt. As you see, the belt was not was not broken in any way, but it's certainly is, uh, is slipping. And then we'll just fish the belt around here and get it off of the pulley. And there's the old belt. So let me see if I can find another one to replace this one. Got a little heavier belt here to put onto it. Um, this one I hope it's going to be the right size and not too small. And we'll see what I can get in here. We'll just try to fish this thing through here and get it through the uh, mechanism here without um, getting it jammed up on anything. So you're able to fish it in here. Thing you got to be careful about is these mechanisms are getting they're they're all the plastic parts are probably going to be getting pretty brittle on some of these things now so you got to kind of be careful to not break any of the parts while you're working on it Was in there like that, and then around this. On the back side. And then under these gears. Fit over top of the pulley like that, and uh, it looks like this might be just about the right belt. We'll find out in a minute here once I get the motor in place. That's how that motor goes in. Not quite, but close. Or is it the other way? Was it the other way? Was it this way? I think this way the motor goes in.
There, it wasn't like that. Okay, I can put the screws in to hold the motor back in place. A short one and a long one. screw on this side. That's how the motor went in like that. Solenoid goes in. I think I got the belt in, in the right place. It, uh, it turns, does it turn the, the motor? Yes, it does, it does turn the motor, you can see it. See, it turning the motor here, moving it. So that's, that belt's in place. And next, we have to put the, the bracket back in. And it's set in like this somehow. The wires went through here. And it kind of sounded like that. Yeah, sort of. this in. Okay, I think that's got all the screws that gotta go into this. Make sure that they're snug. Make sure that that's working good. Okay. That was the tough part. Now, let's uh, put the, the first board back in place, which is this one here. No sigh of relief until the boards are back in place because the uh, flexible cables are the ones that I'm really concerned about. All it takes is a little tug the wrong way and they're going to tear in half and then i got a very bad day. And i got to explain how I wrecked the tape deck. 
And the guy that owns this one, he loves his tape deck. I mean, it, it is a good, it is a good deck. There's no, there's no question that it's a, it's a, it's a half decent deck. I know because I have one. But the reason why people that have these decks want to keep them running is because they're one of the few decks that has DBX noise reduction. And uh, if you've got tapes that are recorded in DBX, you, you kind of have to have a DBX deck to play them on. So it. Uh, it makes these machines quite sought after for the people that have been using DBX over the years. For everybody else, they don't care, right? For for someone who's never used DBX, they don't care about DBX. Why would they care about it, right? But um, but for those that used it, it's um, it's kind of important to try and keep their their tape decks that that had DBX up and running as long as possible just because they can't play the tapes without them and the number of DBX decks is dropping as people retire them and or they break down and they can't get parts to fix them I see I just made a mistake here I have to take this board off again because there's a, a clip that this has to fit under and the only way to get it under there is to put it under there before you fasten the board in place. And get some plugs to plug in here. I gotta figure out where they all are. I'm missing a plug somewhere along here. This one's marked T, which is this plug here, but I'm looking for the the plug marked U. This is P, so that doesn't plug in there. That plugs in up here somewhere. There's a, oh, there's U right there. There's the U plug. The U plug plugs in over here. Okay. It's probably not the right route for it, but... It's good enough. Uh, this one here is O. So one of these ones down here is going to be for O. This is N. Okay, there's the N plug. And then there'll be an O plug down here. That's P. This is the P plug. I get the feeling that the other connector was supposed to come out from behind the board here and get tied down. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll replicate this one. This one I think comes out down below here. I don't know if it matters, but. I can bring it through here then it might make a little more sense to do that and the wires can be tied down like they were before This is the M plug. Right, that goes over here. 
N is there. Where's M? That's M and that's O. Okay, so M goes over here. And then there's the O plug. The O plug goes next to it over here. Okay, I think that's all the plugs. And then they, these dress in through, through these cutouts. the mechanism's ready to go back in the chassis. That's how it sits. And then there's the, the red screws that hold it in place, which are these uh, plastic type threaded screws. Before I do that, let's just get the power switch in, in place. How does it go in? It goes in like this, I think. It comes up through here. Good thing I did this before. I put this together together, otherwise I'll never get the power switch in place. Like that. And then goes over top of the power switch. There. I don't know whether I got it upside down or not, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I think it will work either way. We'll put these four red screws back in. Side screwdriver, and then we'll start plugging all the plugs in. Q. This is the head, the cord play head plugs in there, and there's the erase head. It plugs in down over here. This one's R. So R plugs in right where it's impossible to get at. Sorry, can't see what I'm doing. Okay, that one's in place. 
And the rest of the plugs, S. There's a ground wire that goes on somewhere that wasn't connected. Probably goes onto the chassis here. Now that was just sitting in below the chassis. But I would imagine it probably attaches to the top of this mechanism here to ground it. So we'll just put the ground screw right through there. The next set of plugs to go in will be L and F. Here's L and here's F. And then there's these ones on the back which are labeled E. E is this big one here. And this other one should be D. And it goes in over onto this one. And then there's G and this one over here, this one's K. K goes down here. And G. Where was G? G is right down here at the front. I think that's all the plugs. I'll double check and make sure I haven't missed any, but I'm pretty sure that's all the plugs in place. Yes, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I got them all. We'll find out pretty quick. Okay, let's power this thing up. Hmm. Put the buttons in the right way. They're not quite in place. They sit in here somehow. Where do they sit? There we go. Okay. Moment of truth. Rewind. I'm not rewinding. I'm not fast forward. Uh oh. I'm not playing. Houston, we have a problem still. Well, um, it's not working because the belt I've put in there, I guess, is a little, little bit too heavy. It will go into pause, and the heads do pop up, and if I press play, now it will go into play, as you can see, and it will stop, but it's, it's certainly going a lot slower than it's supposed to, and it won't go into play by itself. It'll only go into play if I go to pause first. And it won't rewind or fast forward because the motor is being stalled out. So all that work for nothing. I gotta take it apart again and find another belt. So let's do that. But you guys don't need to see that. So I'll do that off camera. I'll put another belt on. I'll find one that's just a little bit bigger and we'll put another belt on off camera and then uh, we'll pick up and see whether it works. Okay, so I pulled it apart and put a little different belt in, one that wasn't quite as heavy as this one. And um, we'll try it again. And it only took me like literally about because I'm not filming it right so whenever you're filming something it always takes a lot longer to do anything it appears fast forward works rewind works and it goes into play now I don't think there's anything recorded on this tape so let me just grab a tape that has some stuff on it and uh, we'll see if it plays Dolby C, Dolby B, off, DBX, and DBX Phono. Is that a 
the X reported on this paper now. Or any uh, Dolby on this. Did I, uh, did I use Dolby? I don't remember whether this is in Dolby. It's in Dolby B, so... Dolby B is the that one. care to see how accurate the speed is on this one remember this is a direct drive motor so it should be fairly accurate let's just check it out so I have my guitar tuner 440 440 Hertz recording this was this tape was recorded on my JVC absolutely perfect look at that absolutely perfect and we'll put the three kilohertz side on this is uh, good for listening to the the non-existence of wow and flutter on a deck like this okay it's pretty good okay i heard a little bit of flutter there but we won't talk about that the wow and flutter on these things is supposed to be very low because it's a direct drive motor and uh, it, it is uh, it is accurate. It is very accurate. I know you guys are probably going to want to hear a recording made on this deck, so I'm going to put the front face on, start to put it a bit together, and then we'll make a recording and play it back directly into the camera, so you can hear how this one uh, sounds. And I'll do a little test recording. I'll do it in Dolby B, switch it to Dolby C, switch it to DBX, so you can hear the difference. You can do it without noise reduction as well. I'm not going to tweak the bias because I, I, I don't know where, where the bias is. I could if I wanted to really get critical. I could play with the bias on this thing, but I don't know where the settings are. It's kind of being a two-head deck, you kind of have to do experiments. You have to record your 400 hertz and then your kilohertz and you play it back and you, you listen to it and you tweak it and make another recording it's it, it, it can be done it can they can be dialed in no problem but uh, it's not easy to do like it is on a three head deck where you just put it in a monitor mode and adjust your level and adjust your uh, your bias to flatten things out to try to keep the the eq uh, or try to keep the levels the same on say seven kilohertz as it is on 440 hertz the thing i always liked about these decks is this fluorescent display. It's really nice, nice big two color. Or is it three color? I forget. It was a two color. Oh, it's three color. It's got a red as well. Yeah, it's a three color display on this thing. I mean, yeah, I should know I've got one of these machines. I just haven't used it in a while. It's it's in my living room. Uh, I use it for playback of uh, of DBX tapes, but uh, that goes in like that. Oh, why is the light not lighting up? My DB, my Dolby B lights not lighting up. Oh, oh, look at that! I guess we're gonna have to fix that. It looks like there's maybe a connection problem on that board. What do you think? Flex the board and the light lights up. Good thing I spotted that before putting this thing together. How it how it comes out, I don't know. I guess this board just pops out like this. Should turn off the power first. Probably not a bad idea. I 
Is it just on the LED or is it somewhere else? The way it's wired, it goes over to it goes over to a wire here, and this one goes around the other way and ends up way down over here. It's like it's a common for all of the all the LEDs are on a common. This is the one feeding this one. So let's just uh, let's just turn it on. See if it will. Where it is. There we go. There we go. It was the trace across the top here. I just tinned it. it was somewhere in here, probably right there. Oops. Probably where it was a little fracture there, so we'll, we'll put this little circuit board back in place now and proceed to break it again, I'm sure. That looks a little better. Let's uh, put the front bezel on now. It just uh, slides in place. Make sure everything's in there and the bezel just goes on just like that. I just want to make sure that that power button is on the correct way. Because it could go one way or the other. I think it's on the right way, the power button. I guess if it's not, I'll hear about it. I go in here. There we go. Those are the screws for the bottom. So to make a fair comparison, I'm going to record the same track, just the intro, like the first 30 seconds or so of the same track. We'll do it with no noise reduction. Then we'll do it again with Dolby B, then with Dolby C, and then again with DBX. And I will not make any changes whatsoever to the level. I'm going to record it up to about plus four, I think, even though with DBX, I can, in theory, go up way beyond that. If you look on the, the display here, when I switch DBX on, it goes, the red shows up, right? The rest of them just uh, just have, you know, your yellow screen up to about plus six. As soon as you flip it into DBX, you get red right all the way to plus 18. And in many cases on a metal tape, you could drive a DBX encoded tape that high because plus 18, uh, comes up at about plus nine on a tape, and it was in theory possible to push a uh, a, a metal tape to plus nine. But we're using a standard, uh, like a, a high bias tape, just a cheap Maxell. I'm going to do my recordings to plus four, and I'm going to record the same song, and hopefully I won't get hit with any copyright because this is one of the ones that uh, that uh, old Rick Fart, I mean Rick Hart, had made a claim on years ago. Um, he called it a fool on the corner and the only fool was him for stealing Music Bakery's bed and putting words to it. Anyway, I'm going to play this one here. I'm going to only play the first 30 seconds or so. We'll do it first with no uh, noise reduction and then we're going to, and I, I won't film this part obviously, but uh, we'll play it back and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put on the screen what we're listening to. So let's start the recording process first. So I'll, I'll start the record and I'll cue my track up here. Here we go. So I'm going to record the intro to this because it's got some pretty good dynamics here. And then uh, once the guitar and stuff kicks in, then I'll we'll switch to Dolby B, then Dolby C, then DBX. So what you hear coming back right now, what follows this, will be the tape playback directly from the machine. So I'm going to plug the camera in, and we're going to listen to the recording. I recorded it four times. I recorded one minute each of no Dolby. Dolby B, Dolby C, and then I recorded the entire track in DBX. I'm going to let the entire thing play for the next, I don't know, five minutes or so. Um, six minutes, whatever it was. Before I do it, we'll just go over the boards on this. This one has a bunch of separate boards in it. And what this is, is this is the Dolby board. It's all discrete components. This was before they had developed a single chip Dolby B and C. So it's actually comprised of multiple ICs. 
And there's two separate boards, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. So this one here, this is the left channel Dolby board. I know that because it says right on the board, right down there, it says left channel Dolby board. So there's the Dolby board for the left channel. The one behind it is the Dolby board for the right channel. And this one back here is the DBX board. Left channel, right channel. So this three separate boards on here, they're all plug-in boards. This is uh, shows how early this unit was, but it was right at the beginning when uh, Dolby C first became a thing. And uh, Technics had D DBX on their high-end decks. And they continued it on this one for a few years. And they even had a, a, a car stereo that had Dolby B and DBX because I actually had one in my old car. And I played that thing so much, I wore it out. And I don't know whatever happened to it. I think it sold with the old 86 Mustang. I'm pretty sure it was probably still in the dash on that car. Either that or I've got it kicking around somewhere. And I'd love to find it if I do. But anyway, enough for me. Let's play the tape back. And you can use your own ears and hear the difference between uh, no Dolby, Dolby B, Dolby C, and DBX. And more importantly, you'll probably hear the different uh, noise reduction systems working because they can all be heard working. But I think you'll agree when you hear the DBX, there'll be no hiss. It's just completely, complete silence before the music starts.
So that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys uh, stuck around to the end and listened to that DBX demo at the end there, just so you could hear how good that DBX system was. And that's another thing. DBX never, ever called their system a noise reduction system. If you look on it, it'll say Dolby Noise Reduction and DBX System. DBX never advertised their system as a noise reduction. DBX advertised their system as noise elimination. It actually stood for decibel expansion, DBX, decibel expansion. It improved the dynamic range of a cassette tape from around 45 or so to about 90 dB, so it got cassette tape as close as possible to the dynamic range of a digital recording. And I think that example probably showed it off pretty good. And remember, this is just a two-head deck. Three-head deck would work even better, or if I had dialed it in. These decks here, it's, I've got one, and, and they do sound fantastic if you dial them in to your tape, which takes a bit of work to do. But once you've got a tape dialed in, you know, if you know that, uh, like, Maxell tapes need, like, a plus two or a minus two, you can just adjust it and set it up for your type of tape. And typically, people that use these decks, they'd find a brand of tape that, they, that worked great and they could get it dialed in and then they wouldn't use any other tape and then you ended up with very very good results anyway this one's all done thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now